When the war came, it changed a lot of lives in Hollywood. This was taken at Camp Pendleton near San Diego four days after it opened. That drill master is Private Jerome Power. These are authentic pictures. They are not clips out of an old movie. Over in the barracks, shining his shoes like any other good Marine, was another Hollywood refugee, Glenn Ford. Here's another interesting picture. This was taken at the naval base in Alameda. That's Ensign Bob Stack, who, of all things, was an aerial machine gun instructor. Machine guns, huh? <laughs> Looks like Elliot Ness was getting in some good practice. Hollywood Canteen, Christmas, 1943. Betty Davis was there, Eddie Cantor was Santa Claus. When movie stars get together for a charity baseball game, you can always be sure of a great turnout. But I've never seen such a crowd as showed up for this one at Wrigley Field. Way before the game started, all the seats were filled and hundreds of fans had to stand on the field. They saw a great show, a lot of stars. There are the two captains, Frank Sinatra and Andy Russell. At this moment, they're announcing that all attendance records have been broken. Here's the bat girl, Jane Russell. You know, I think Major League Baseball could use an innovation like this. There's the umpire coming out of the dugout. I'll bet Leo DeRocha wouldn't argue with this guy. Yeah, even the Three Stooges were there. They were trying to watch Burt Lancaster at bat. Burt hits a good one and legs it out to first base. I didn't get a chance to shoot many plays, but this next one is a pip. Mickey Rooney was at bat. Mickey hits a butt and runs to first base. The first baseman misses the ball and Mickey runs to second. The second baseman muffed the ball and Mickey ran for third. Three bases on a bunt. He starts for home, changes his mind, goes back and they call him out. Well, that, that, that's the umpire, Jack Carson. I thought they were gonna kill him. Shortly after the war, I participated in another baseball game, but it wasn't at Wrigley Field. It was on a sand lot in Beverly Hills. It was a father and son game. Bing Crosby pitted against his boys. I was the umpire. You know, I was around when Bing started this club. I walked the floor with him the night that boy, Gary, was born. That's really collecting cigars the hard way. And there's Philip coming in. Phil hit a good one that time, a three-bagger. You know, only in Hollywood could this happen. Probably the greatest entertainer of our time, playing baseball with his sons on a sandlot in back of a church and going unnoticed. That's Lindsay. Here's another fellow who takes time out to play with his kids, Bob Cummings. Bob has the most unusual method of teaching his youngsters to swim. Almost before they can walk, he puts them on his back, makes them hold on, and swims underwater with them. Look, Ma, no snorkel. She must have liked it. She couldn't wait to get back in the pool. Here's another interesting shot, taken from the bottom of Bob Cummings' pool. Watch this little girl's face as she holds her breath. The title of this next picture is, Are You Sure Marilyn Monroe Started This Way?
during the blackouts run, I got a family started myself. This is my youngest son, Cort. There's a very amusing story about that little guy. A few years ago, I was doing a television show in the East, and I had him visit me. He was seven at the time and had never appeared in public before. Like any proud daddy, I wanted to show him off. So I thought it might be very cute to have a little girl sing a love song to him. While I think that Court liked the idea of appearing on television, he was not very happy about this love stuff, especially when I suggested that the little girl lean over and kiss him during the number. Well, anyway, this is what happened. So far, you've seen almost three decades of film that I've taken since I decided to make Hollywood my hometown. As you probably noticed, I, I didn't take every shot, and I might have mixed up some of the dates and places, but, uh, you know, it's very hard to remember everything that happened in 35 years. But I'm giving you the same treatment I gave my folks. After all, I was never one to spoil a good story by the lack of a few facts. I still like to take pictures. Matter of fact, I've been at it so long, I can't kick the habit. Just, uh, just recently, a couple of photogenic friends of mine left for Rome. It was very early in the morning, but uh, I was there. back from the airport that morning, I was inclined to disagree with those who contend that Hollywood has lost all its glamour. To me, even after living here for years, the people of movie town are still some of the most glamorous personalities on the world stage. Yeah, whenever I see a tourist with a camera, I have an inkling of what motivates him. I bet you can't guess who these kids belong to. No, they're, they're not the McGuire sisters. I'll give you another clue. There's their daddy and mommy. Yes, those three little moppets belong to this gentleman, Pat Boone. Pat and his family represent the new Hollywood. He's a sincere, solid citizen whose interest in community as well as business affairs would make him welcome in any town. He's a good sport, too, has a wonderful sense of humor. When I was taking these pictures, I bet him that he couldn't put on a disguise and walk through Disneyland without being recognized. But he did. The white sneakers almost gave him away.
You may not have recognized this star in Disneyland, but I'm sure you'd have no trouble recognizing this one in Beverly Hills. He's one of the finest actors on the screen. You know who that is? That's Thomas Mitchell. Hey, Tom. That's Jack Benny's home back there. Tom lives just up the street. What a gracious gentleman. This is Sunset Boulevard, the fabled highway of the stars. Don't look now, but isn't that Jane Mansfield? Could be. She lives on this street. That is Jane Mansfield. She had her hair dyed for a picture. I went over to her house and got some very interesting shots. You know, she's the only one in town who has a heart-shaped swimming pool. Despite her much publicized flair for maintaining the tradition of a glamorous siren, she is really a serious-minded young girl with a swell husband, Mickey Hargitay, and three beautiful children. That's the youngest one there. Oh, and I almost forgot, she also has 10 dogs and two goats. If you ever come out our way and want to find out where Jane and the other movie stars live, all you have to do is buy a map from one of those guys along the road. No. Or is it? Well, at least I'm sure that's Jack Lemon. I took this picture myself very early one morning as he was going to work. He was making a picture called The Notorious Landlady. You'll notice that he has a house now. He's given up the apartment. Yes, if you get up early, you can see Jack Lemon going to work, and if you stay up late, you might see him coming out of a premiere. You might also see Jimmy Stewart. Hollywood is very proud of him. He's not only a great actor, but he's also a general. This is the studio where Jimmy Stewart worked for so long. I went over to visit an old vaudeville friend of mine who was making a picture with Lana Turner called Bachelor in Paradise. They told me at the gate that he wasn't on the set. He was riding his bicycle somewhere around the studio, but I finally tracked him down. Bob said to be sure and get a good picture. He was expecting to win his first Academy Award this year. Hope calls me the C.B. DeMille of home movies. This is where I made the first mistake, letting another comedian take my picture. I didn't want the camera back with that picture in it. I'd rather have the bicycle. Uh-oh, for a moment I thought I was gonna take one of those Chaplin Falls. Remember this gate? We really should have a title here saying 30 years later. Well, the studio looks just the same. <laughs> That's more than I can say for that actor. I went over there to see Frank Capra, who was making a new movie. I caught him just as he was coming off the set. I figured we ought to get some pictures and we might as well let him take them. Anybody can do a better job than that hope. The first to come out was my old fishing pal, Glenn Ford. He was surprised to see that I had put Capra to work. It was nice to see Glenn again, but I didn't want to detain him too long. Even movie stars only have an hour for lunch. Then out came probably the greatest dramatic actress of our time, the one and only Betty Davis, with Hope Lang, another star of the picture. Betty was surprised to see me there. If she seems heavily made up, it's because she's playing Apple Annie in this Frank Capra picture, Pocket Full of Miracles. Incidentally, Hope Lang had just finished doing a crying scene, 
so Capra kept up a steady stream of funny gags, trying to make her laugh. I tried to hook it up with the apples, but you can't top that Capra. I had my two little daughters with me that day. It was their first time inside of a studio, and before we left, I took the kids for a walk down Paramount's Western Street. I tried to explain to him that one of the first talkies I ever remember seeing was the Virginian. It was a class western, the first of a long row which Gary Cooper was to make during his lifetime. It was made on this street. You know, each time one of these giants of the screen leave us forever, Cooper, Gable, Bogart, the sense of loss is a great deal more pronounced. For men like Coop were childhood heroes, and their image was never shaken on through adulthood. I sometimes wonder if our children growing up will have such heroes from the screen, men that they will recall for a lifetime with affection and pleasurability. I hope so. Good night.